Oh, 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 Bill, Bill, Bill. I don't throw it. Let me just touch you. Then you can throw it. Ah, then you can throw it now. Oh. <laughs> that nice. Yes, that's nice. That little bait catches nice size fish. Yes, it does. Let me tell you, that's fun to do. Now, speaking of lures, it's a known fact that some lures seem to work better than others and will catch more fish at times. And it's not uncommon to find one angler who swears by a certain bait and another avid angler who complains that he couldn't catch a cold using it. Regardless of what lure you're fishing with, it's important to put some thought behind your cast. If the spot looks good, don't make a cast and leave. Make several, maybe as many as three or four. Psych yourself to believe a fish is there. Now, by doing this, you'll accomplish two important things. For one, you'll be fishing the spot more carefully, and secondly, much more thoroughly. Another key component I've learned about artificial plugs is that when a bass, especially a large bass, is attracted to most lures, many times it'll swim up to the bait, maybe look at it if it's stationary, or follow it a short distance if it's moving, and then decide whether or not to bust it. If the lure doesn't suddenly change speed, action, or direction, as living prey would, there's a good chance a fish will reject it. And this is why, on the retrieve, you should be very conscious of your presentation, changing the movement every few feet or so as you work it along. It's important you do this with any lure you fish, creating a natural, erratic look, because that's one thing that will often entice a strike. Remember, you're fishing an imitator that's made of a foreign matter, so you must do all in your power to make it look like the real thing. There we go. Whop, he hit it full. Here it comes, here it goes, yay! Hard pulling thing. Look at that fish pull. Around that trolling motor. I'm gonna have to kneel on the rods and get you off on this side. Come here. Oh, funny. Come here, you pretty thing. Come here, you pretty thing. <laughs> 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 you ain't gonna go you ain't going anywhere. Quit all that showing off. Come and quit all that showing off. You're going right on my thumbs where you going. Boy, right in the top of the snoot. Right in the top of the snoot. What happened to your fin there? Big boy. Nice. There he goes. Woo! I like that. Tell you what, think about this. Live forage doesn't fight its way through the water. Instead, it swims or moves smoothly and easily as it cruises along. Sure, it may vary its speed somewhat, moving faster or slower, or even stopping. But if danger threatens, it's sure gonna do something different. It's either gonna speed up, it's gonna retreat, get gone, go crazy, play possum, try to hide, but most times it's going to move out like a late freight.
You know, when I think back over the years of the really big bass I've been blessed to catch, one sure thing comes to mind, and that is lure presentation. Without question, a slow erratic retrieve has produced my biggest catches. And lures like the plastic worm, a jig, a spinnerbait slow roll, or free falling it, possibly a crankbait fish and a stop and go retrieve, or even topwater lures like stick baits and prop baits are usually the best producers. Bass, as a general rule, are not tailored to long pursuit. They're not going to chase and eat something that doesn't act halfway natural. Ooh, come out from under that tree. Ooh, oh, buddy. Hold him, good fishing pole. Hold him. He's through. <laughs> Easy. Look at that. Look at that. What do you say, Buster? Huh? I won't tell you what. Little old baits catch some heavy numbers of fish. Pint size bait catch gallon size bass. I'll continue talking about my seven favorite numbers in my next tip. So I hope you'll make plans to join me. See you then.